I shared my salary progression to making over $250,000 per year at Facebook, and the response was interesting to say the least. It became clear that software engineers in the United States make an order of magnitude more money than those doing the exact same job elsewhere in the world. Or at least, that's how it seems. So why is this? What caused this massive income disparity? And what, if anything, can we do to improve it? First, I want to understand how we got here to begin with. Now, of course, there's a lot that goes into determining wages. But let's start with a very basic, simplified example and see if we can sort of derive the current state of the tech industry from there. So let's say that we have an American tech company in Silicon Valley, we'll call it Pied Piper. And Pied Piper is looking to hire a software engineer. And then this guy named Bob comes along. Bob has a computer science degree and he's qualified for the job. So Pied Piper offers it to him. But how do they decide how much money to offer Bob? Well, in this simplified scenario, there are no outside factors. Bob has no other job opportunities. So Pied Piper just offers Bob the minimum amount of money that they can. For simplicity, let's say they offered him a salary of $20,000 per year. Now, Bob might feel like he's being underpaid for his skills, but he needs the money and he has no other options. Okay, so now what possible scenarios would cause Pied Piper to have to pay Bob more money? Well, the first is going to be competition. Let's imagine that another tech company comes in. In this case, we'll call it Hooli. Hooli is also hiring for a software engineer, but Bob is the only software engineer in the area. Hooli is mature and has better funding than Pied Piper, so naturally they can afford to pay Bob more money. Because of this, they offer to increase his pay to $30,000 if he leaves to come to Hooli. This creates a bidding war dramatically increasing Bob's salary, as Pied Piper doesn't want to lose their engineer, so they offer to increase his salary all the way to $40,000. But when does the bidding war end? Well, theoretically, it would end when either Hooli or Pied Piper can no longer afford to pay Bob any more money. Let's say Hooli ends up winning and now Bob is going to be paid $50,000 per year at Hooli. Okay, so I know this sounds like very basic and introductory economics, but bear with me for a second. What would now happen if there were more software engineers and more companies entering into the market? Well, first let's consider the extreme cases. What happens if there are millions of software engineers and they're competing for one job? Well, if everything else is held equal, then it's going to be given to whichever software engineer is willing to work for the least amount of money. On the other hand, if there are millions of jobs and only a few software engineers, then the companies willing to pay the absolute most are going to be the only ones who are able to hire those few software engineers because these software engineers will have all of the leverage and thus they can drive up their prices. Now, of course, we don't live in either of these extremes. But this basic scenario is one of the leading reasons for why software engineers in the United States seem to be paid so much more. The US tech market accounts for roughly 35% of the entire world's tech economy. Yet there are actually more computer science graduates in countries like India. So in our example, the United States has more jobs available and yet it has less qualified job applicants. And what we know this means is that companies will have to compete more to hire these job applicants and thus prices get driven up. But this doesn't even tell the whole story. If we think back to Bob, why did he only make $50,000? After all, he was the only software engineer available in the entire area. Well, in this scenario, $50,000 represented the amount of money that Hooli had to spend to outbid their competitors. So if there were multiple competitors as big as Hooli, they would have kept the bidding war going and thus the price would have gone even higher. So what this means is that the most important companies for driving these astronomically high salaries are the most profitable companies. These are the companies with the most money to spend. And while the US might be 35% of the tech industry, it represents somewhere around half of these large tech companies that can really afford to drive up salaries super high. Not only this, but the United States also represents the vast majority of the venture capital industry, specifically within the tech sphere. It's these VC firms that give smaller companies large investments. 
which in turn allows these smaller companies to have a higher wage ceiling, and thus these small companies are also able to contribute to driving wages upwards. And now one component I've completely left out is cost of living. This is sort of a self-fulfilling prophecy because as you inflate wages, people have more money and thus more spending power is competing for the same goods, and thus the cost of living goes up. But I still think it's worth mentioning as it adds an important layer of perspective to the whole situation. For example, if we compare San Francisco with Bangalore, India, which are considered by most to be the largest tech centers of their respective countries, the cost of living in San Francisco is somewhere in the range of 7 to 10 times higher depending on which cost of living calculator you trust and use. For example, rent for a one bedroom in San Francisco can easily run you over $3,000 per month, while a similar apartment in Bangalore might only cost about $250 US dollars per month. And in addition to the cost of living, there's also a cost to becoming qualified to be a software engineer in the first place, and that main cost is getting a university degree. The vast majority of software engineers in the US have a four-year university degree, which on average is going to cost about $10,000 per year, or $40,000 total. And if you account for the fact that these tech companies are mostly recruiting from the top-ranked universities, I would guess that the average yearly tuition paid by these software engineers making so much money was actually much higher. For example, Stanford, Harvard, and MIT, which are three of the top-ranked universities for computer science, all have tuitions over $50,000 per year. So if you graduate from one of these schools, you will have spent about $200,000 in becoming qualified for these jobs. Now, depending on where you live, this argument might be less compelling. For example, if you live in London, the wages are still considerably lower, but the cost of living isn't all that far off from San Francisco. In this case, I think the wage delta is largely explainable by the size and the maturity of the tech industry. That said, there's also some other points that are harder to exactly quantify, but they do make a difference. For example, many countries in Europe guarantee new parents months, if not even over a year sometimes, of parental leave. Now, to be clear, I'm not saying this is a bad thing, but companies need to consider benefits like this in compensation packages. For example, if 10% of your workforce at any given moment is on some sort of leave, then you need 10% more employees to complete the same work, and thus the average salary is going to be around 10% lower. Now, that's a complete oversimplification, but the point is just that generally speaking, in some countries there are extra benefits given to employees that aren't given in the US, and those things cost money and thus they lower the amount of money that companies are willing to directly pay their employees. So some of this wage gap can be explained through things like cost of living and differing benefits, but that's definitely not all of it. So what can we do about this? Well, I think the biggest driving factor is going to be the size of the tech industry, which can be both a result of the venture capital landscape as well as just what each individual country actually values. For example, the United States is clearly set up in such a way that it values business owners and it incentivizes people to start new businesses. That's not to say it's the only country doing this, but there's definitely been a great success in the United States' investment into growing this industry. So solution-wise, I think it's really going to vary country to country, and I certainly don't feel like I'm some authority on what needs to change or even if anything needs to change. But I do think that this is something that's naturally going to change over time, as we move towards a more global economy, and just as the tech industry matures a bit. For example, India has started seeing extremely rapid growth in venture capital funding, which has led to the creation of multiple multi-billion dollar tech companies. I think over time these companies are going to have the same impact in India that companies like Google and Facebook have had on the economy of the tech industry in the United States. But do let me know what you think about all of this down in the comments below, and I will see you in the next video.